Constitution no longer applied? What if the whole purpose of the Constitution was to limit the government? What if Congress's enumerated powers in the Constitution no longer limited Congress, but were actually used as a justification to extend Congress's authority over every realm of human life? What if the president, meant to be an equal to Congress, has instead become a democratically elected, term-limited monarch? What if the president assumed that everything he did was legal just because he's the president? What if he could interrupt your regularly scheduled radio and TV programming for a special message from him? What if he could declare war on his own? What if he could read your emails and your texts without a search warrant? What if he could kill you without warning? What if Supreme Court justices no longer looked to the Constitution to determine the constitutionality of a law, but rather simply to what justices who preceded them thought about it? What if the rights and principles guaranteed in the Constitution have been so distorted in the past 200 years as to be unrecognizable by the founders? What if the 50 states were no longer sovereign entities, equals to each other, and parents of the federal government they voluntarily constituted? What if the states were mere provinces of a totally nationalized and fully centralized government? What if the Constitution was amended stealthily, not by constitutional amendments duly ratified by the states, but by the constant and persistent expansion of the federal government's role in our lives? What if the federal government decided if its own powers were proper and constitutional? What if the Constitution were no longer the supreme law of the land? What if you needed a license from the government to speak, to assemble, or to protest against the government? What if the government didn't like what you planned to say and so it didn't give you the license? What if the right to keep and bear arms only applied to the government? What if posse comitatus, the federal law that prohibits our military from occupying our streets, were no longer in effect? What if the government considered the military an adequate dispenser of domestic law enforcement? What if cops looked and acted like troops and you couldn't distinguish the military from the police? What if you were not secure in your person, in your papers, and in your property? What if federal agents could write their own search warrants in defiance of the Constitution? What if the government could decide when you were and were not entitled to a jury trial? What if the government could take your property whenever it wanted? What if the government could continue prosecuting you until it got the verdict it wanted? What if the government could force you to testify against yourself simply by labeling you a domestic terrorist? What if the government could torture you until you said what the government wanted to hear? What if people running for president actually supported torture? What if the government tortured your children to get to you? What if government judges and government lawyers intimidated juries into convicting the innocent? What if the government could send you to your death and your innocence meant nothing so long as the government's procedures were followed? What if America's prison population, the largest in the world, was a cruel and unusual way for a country to be free? What if half the prison population never harmed anyone but themselves? What if the people had no rights except those the government chose to let them have? What if the states had no rights except to do as the federal government commanded? What if our elected officials didn't really live among us, but instead all had their hearts and homes in Washington, D.C.? What if the government could strip you of your rights because of where your mother was when you were born? What if the income tax was unconstitutional? What if the states were convinced to give up their representation in Congress? What if the government tried to ban you from using a substance in your body that is older than the government itself? What if voting didn't mean anything anymore because both political parties stand for big government? What if the government could write any law, regulate any behavior, and tax any event? The Constitution be damned. What if the government was the reason we don't have a Constitution anymore? What if you could love your country but hate what the government has done to it? What if sometimes to love your country you had to alter or abolish the government? What if Jefferson was right? What if that government is best which governs least? What if I'm right? What if the government is wrong? What if it is dangerous to be right when the government is wrong? What if it is better to perish fighting for freedom than to live as a slave? What if freedom's greatest hour of danger is now? It's time to pray. I'd like to begin by reading three verses, 22, 23 and 24 in Mark chapter 11. These three verses that this is coming from the mouth of God. This is the same God who by divine breath put the universe in motion. 
And so when Jesus speaks, it's never without a purpose. It's never without power. And the only thing that would hinder the word of God, this word becoming a reality in you and I, is that we simply fail to believe it. We have contrary thoughts to the word of God alive in our hearts and we let these thoughts have the preeminence. Verse 22, and Jesus answering said unto them, have faith in God. For verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this, room, this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Therefore I say unto you, what things soever you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. As you desire to serve God with a full heart, he said, whatever you ask for, I'll give it to you. Nothing will be denied you. James said, ask for wisdom and God will give it to you liberally, freely. He won't withhold. If the wisdom that you seek is not a selfish wisdom, but it's a wisdom to be used for the purposes of God, there'll be no end to what God begins to speak to your heart. There are giftings of the Holy Spirit. There's an incredible power of God that is available to those who want to represent Him in this and every other generation. When you and I consider the threatenings of this hour in which we're living, the social storms we're facing and will face, the political storms that are just ahead of us, the economic storm that's going to touch this country and perhaps most of the known world, unprecedented storms in this generation that you and I will have to face. And what if this storm is, is just God's mercy call to say, are you ready? Is your heart ready? Are you given to the work of God? Do you have what it takes to stand in the storm? Oh, we preach about it, we talk about it, and we all go hip, hip, hooray when the sun is out. And the, and the paycheck is in the box or some kind of check at least is there every couple of weeks and there's still food on the table. But what happens when the storm comes? You know, that's where we really find out what we're made of, what's really in the heart. Are we really in this for other people? Are we really in it for the purposes of God? Paul the Apostle said the last days of history as we know it are going to be characterized by a form of religion that is powerless. It is a denial of the power of God. It looks good on the outside, but inside it's corrupt. No more coming out of the house of God powerless. Folks, there is no more time to get these things right. The time is now. And as the scripture says, if you and I can hear his voice, we must hear it now. And we must take seriously what God's speaking to us. Now Jesus says, have faith in God. And there's got to be something that gets into your heart and gets into my heart that says, God Almighty, no more peace with this. No more peace with this area of my life. No more peace with standing on a foundation and being satisfied with coming out of the house of God with a seeming appearance of godliness. But yet I go home and my godliness very quickly dissipates. It's different in the church than it is at home. There's got to be something in your heart that says, God, no more of this. No more singing boldly about the love of God and the evangelizing power of God and the changing power of God. And then I go to work and I'm like a mouse hiding under a desk. No more of this. No more of this powerlessness. No more of this fruitlessness. No more just talking about the fact that I go to church and that's as deep as my evangelization gets and my witness gets. No more people in my office, my family, my neighborhood coming to me. And though I look like a church man or church woman, when they reach out, there's no fruit there. There's nothing that can satisfy their hearts. No more of this. Not just the fig tree, the whole system that has allowed my life to look like this. I am going to do what Jesus said. And if it's the mirror you got to look into, then look into the mirror and say, I say to you in the name of Christ, to this whole mountain, this whole thing, this whole system, this whole whatever I'm built on that is producing powerlessness in my life. I speak to you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and I command you to be removed and be cast into the sea. It's time to pray. It's time to pray, folks. It's time to pray. 
It's not time to play games with God. It's time to pray. We're living in a time of storms. It's time to pray. It's time for the church to rise up. It's time for the Pauls to stand on the deck of a perishing ship again. It's time to pray. It's time for pastors to preach like you've never preached in your entire life. It's time to pray. It's time to stand against the works of the devil. It's time to lay hands on the sick and see them recover. It's time to pray. It's time for the glory of God to be revealed. It's time to bring people into your home and bow down your head at your table and say, I'm going to prove to you that God will provide no matter how difficult the days are. It's time to pray. It's time to pray your sons and daughters back under the roof of God, back under the canopy of Christ. It's time to pray and believe that God is able to do what He said He can do. Have faith in God. Have faith in God. Have faith in God. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to the Lamb of God.